This is one of the most surreal things I think I've ever come across. A writer from the Human Rights Foundation encouraging people to buy RuneScape Gold. RuneScape Gold could be the key to ending financial mass surveillance, regaining privacy from tyrannical governments, and help anyone with a criminal record buy Bitcoin. And it really all started off with a joke. This might be obvious to some of you, but mass surveillance on the internet happens a lot. Just about every website tracks you in some way. Let's say you toss on incognito mode and an ad blocker to avoid that. Your internet service provider still has records of every site you visited and the site owner can still see your IP. Worst of all, this data often gets sold to other companies. One way to mitigate this is with a virtual private network such as Surfshark, the backer of today's video. With Surfshark, you can hide your data from those pesky ISPs and advertisers, protect yourself from malware, and regain your privacy on the internet. On top of all that, Surfshark allows you access to other countries' versions of Netflix. For example, Blade Runner 2049, my favorite movie, isn't available in the US. So I pop open Surfshark, switch my VPN to Brazil, and start watching. It's that easy. Click the link in my description to get Surfshark today, and if you don't like it, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. Now, this leads me to Bitcoin, the first major decentralized digital currency. That's a mouthful, so to keep it simple, it's digital money. It's becoming more popular due to its ease of use, privacy, and the huge surge of Bitcoin millionaire success stories. So you made this bet with your parents that if you were 18 and a millionaire, they, they wouldn't force you to go to college. It's a new online currency. He sold his Xbox and other belongings to invest in the coin. He went from rags to riches. I was 18 years old when I made my first million dollars. Well, Bitcoin is great for some people, not so much for others. 8% of the United States population can't really get their hands on it, sort of. Let me explain. In simple terms, you need a digital wallet in order to hold your Bitcoin. But how do you put money into a wallet that doesn't exist? The most popular way is through something called a crypto exchange. They allow you to exchange money for cryptocurrency, namely Bitcoin, and the huge majority of these exchanges require you to verify your identity in order to purchase it. The catch is, if you're a felon, you'll likely fail their compliance and won't be able to use their service. A lot of the times you see the media associating Bitcoin with things like organized crime, the dark web, and other illicit activities. Because many people think Bitcoin is completely anonymous. It can be, but most of the time, not really. This is where the Human Rights Foundation comes in. A nonprofit organization that describes itself as promoting and protecting human rights globally. They were formed in 2005 with the goal to fight for the rights others were unable to protect. Last year, they hired this guy, Eric Wall, a technology privacy expert, software engineer, and cryptocurrency expert. Now, why? To quote their CSO, Alex Gladstein, Eric will be working with HRF for the next 12 months, writing five essays on privacy technology with a special focus on cryptocurrency and how we can preserve privacy in the financial world. It's actually really quite an eye-opening collection of articles if you have the time to read them. They discuss why you'd use cryptocurrency, how they work, and lastly, what we're really focusing on, part five, BISC, RuneScape, and stories from buying Bitcoin anonymously. The results Eric was able to come up with might actually shock you. The goal of this article was to purchase Bitcoin anonymously. Eric fires up a copy of the Tor browser and gets to work. His first stop, a website called BISC. When it comes to Bitcoin trading, BISC is as anonymous as it can get. So in theory, anyone should be able to use it. One problem, they require a security deposit in Bitcoin. So that's no longer an option because it's assumed you don't already own any Bitcoin. Eric goes down the list trying to buy Bitcoin using ATMs, gift cards, Telegram, local meetups, and even making a fake Tinder account. None of these work. He had one successful trade all day and it wasn't even close to anonymous. Remember Alex, the CSO? He jokingly suggests to Eric that he should give RuneScape Gold a try because of this tweet. Little did he know, he hit the jackpot. But first, before I explain this, this is by no means a tutorial or endorsement of this method. Real world trade is against Jagex's terms of service and can get you banned from playing RuneScape forever. So obviously don't do it. There's no requirements to create a RuneScape account, even felons and ex-convicts can play. Not to mention gold sellers offer basically every payment option on the planet. So Eric found an underground gold selling site and started off big. He purchased 800 million gold with PayPal. Now you might be thinking, PayPal isn't anonymous, it's not even close. You're right, but I'll get to that in a minute. He makes a RuneScape account and picks up all the gold he purchased. Now he needs to sell it, but in order for it to be anonymous, it can't be linked to his current accounts. So he makes a brand new Discord, email, RuneScape account, and purchases a new burner SIM card. He has his two characters made up in-game and transfer the gold. Right now, there's absolutely no link between the two besides the gold that was just traded. There's really no evidence that the two accounts belong to the same person. Finally, he finds a buyer on the same site he used to buy the gold, gives them his Bitcoin wallet address, and transfers the gold over. Now, this probably seems like a jumbled mess of accounts. You might be wondering, how is this anonymous? I reached out to Eric, the article's author, to answer just that. 
He said, it is really quite anonymous because we trade the RuneScape gold between two completely separate characters, like I mentioned before. So even if you paid for gold with PayPal, you're buying Bitcoin with the gold from a completely different character. The government can patch things together if they work with both Jagex and PayPal, but they wouldn't have binding evidence. He goes on to say that he isn't actually a lawyer though. He really does have a point though. It's only against Jagex's terms of service to buy gold, it's not illegal. So even if your government is oppressive and keeping a large eye over you, I don't really think they're gonna care if you're buying RuneScape gold. Not to mention, we have no clue how long trade records are kept. It could be forever, but based on how thousands happen every minute, I wouldn't be shocked if they at least limit how many records are kept. Maybe just for high profile players and trades where lots of gold is exchanged. I also wanted to ask Eric, why do none of the alternatives he also talked about work? Surely there's more ways to stay anonymous than RuneScape gold. And there is, but the reason he couldn't use them was because of his location. Eric is from Sweden and was unable to find anyone who was willing to meet up with him to exchange Bitcoin for cash. After all, that's a rather unusual request. They probably figured he was going to try and scam them or, I don't know, mug them? It just seems kind of sketchy when there's so many other ways to buy Bitcoin that aren't as anonymous. I also mentioned earlier that Bitcoin ATMs exist, which actually are quite anonymous. Especially in times right now, you can just put a mask on, put your hoodie up, and it's near impossible for ATM cameras to recognize you. You just pop the cash in and get a paper receipt or a public key that has your Bitcoin on it. Now, why didn't this work? Well, there's no Bitcoin ATMs in Sweden. They're still a fairly new concept and can even be hard to find in big places like the United States. There's a couple of thousand of them spread out over the states, but some states actually don't have any. Before I discuss who's actually using his RuneScape method, let's talk about the approach you probably all wanna hear about, making a fake Tinder account. This is when Eric started to get really desperate. He was running out of options. He first started with a fake Facebook account with a AI generated picture, but that didn't work. He got banned soon after. Now, he says he's not proud of this Tinder method and wouldn't recommend anyone else use this. Anyone who's used a dating app knows that a lot of the times you'll come across people on there for, well, not dating purposes. So Eric had his SO make a Tinder with the bio asking for a Bitcoin trade counterparty. He actually got banned before they could even arrange a trade, which is actually not too surprising. I asked Eric if he knew anyone that used his method after reading his article, and he said, no, but I know a lot of people who got their first Bitcoin by selling RuneScape gold and got pulled into the space that way. It's kind of a little shocking to me that there could be some guy in another country trying to hide his purchases from the government using RuneScape gold. I've just never really seen anything like it before. There's something else in the RuneScape community you've probably never seen. Hackers can lock any RuneScape account forever with just the username. I first reported this in August and it's still not fixed. Learn how to protect your account by watching this video on screen right now. 